everyone for for having us. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be kicking off this uh, this uh, series for the for the semester. Uh, and this project is with uh, David David, who is there on the call. Uh, so David was at BU for uh, for short while, and now he's back uh, at TEDx in, in in France. Um, and so in this paper, from a broad perspective, what we're going to be asking is, okay, there's been a very fast growing literature and interest uh, in practice of, you know, you know treating the, the role of green investors in the economy very seriously. Okay, and so what this literature is asking is, what's going to be the impact of this on expected returns, cost of capital, portfolios, and this kind of thing. Something else that is very important, but that this literature has not been treating is a consuming way, okay? Uh, and so basically, you know, what we're going to be asking in this paper is, okay, what if those green investors um, that we know are important also care about what they could choose? Okay, what if they also want their Tesla, the organic food, and how is this going to have an impact, or how could this have an impact on the cost of capital of firms, the portfolio decisions, and this kind of thing? Okay, so if you've opened the paper, uh, you've seen that uh, this is this is quite a theoretical work, right? We we kind of have to take that route to talk about those questions, uh, but but today I'll try to give you at least the, the essence of what we're doing, okay? What, what's conceptually uh, behind what we're doing, and um, and and leave it at that. All right, so. Just as one piece of evidence that this could matter and the clicker doesn't work, maybe. As one piece of evidence that this could matter, uh, th there was a recent survey by Morgan Stanley in 2019 that asked a um, bunch of investors, uh, investors some questions. Okay. So the first question that they asked was, uh, you, you might not be able to see it here, but you know, do you screen your investments according to some kind of ESG criteria? Okay. And so to that question, 33% of investors said, yes, we do. So this is consistent with this idea that we have green investors uh, in the eco. But to another question, which was, okay, do you also uh, purchase a particular brand uh, depending on the, society, the, the company's uh, environmental and societal footprint? Again, 33% of investors said, yes, we do. Okay. And so what this uh, uh, suggests, and sorry about the mic, it keeps cutting, but uh, what this suggests is that um, the ethical motives that may uh, make investors want to keep more of their or to put more of their capital towards green investments and green firms may also underpin and interact with uh, their consumption practices. So that's kind of the, the, the big um, the, the, the big starting point. Green investors may also be green consumers. Now, something else that is uh, very important when you start thinking about consumption is uh, going to be the price at which you can buy those consumption goods. Okay. And so here, as a second layer of, of, of motivation to this, I note that uh, there's been a number of shocks recently, or it could be also some shocks that we expect in the future, that could make the price of different types of goods, and in particular, uh, green consumption goods, so your Tesla or whatever you, you want, fluctuate quite a lot uh, in time, okay? So here you have a few examples. Uh, I won't go through them in detail, but you know, it could be the election of a new government or, or lack thereof. It could be a contraction in trade. It could be war. It could be energy shortages. All things we're kind of living through uh, kind of as we speak. And so because of all of this, producing different types of goods uh, may be more or less difficult so that the price of those, of those goods, in particular, the price of you know, green consumption goods and services might fluctuate quite a lot. And so, you know, in summary, uh, green investors might be green consumers, and the price of this green consumption might be fluctuating quite a lot, uh, so that they may want to consider this when they when they make decisions. Okay, so that's kind of the, the big picture, uh, big picture uh, starting point. Now, what has the literature been saying about those about those things? Well, actually, not not much, right? What the literature recently on those topics uh, has been fo focusing on is okay, we are taking this the this idea that we have green investors in the economy seriously, and really focus narrowly on, on the impact on, 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 on investment. Um, but uh, so the way this goes, and actually David has a great paper on, on, the, on, the, on the topic, the way this goes in this literature is to say, okay, you know, I don't want to get into the, the technical details, but you know, we have two types of investors, green and neutral investors. And what you can do is that you can basically derive the expected returns on different types of assets. So the cost of capital on different types of assets in the presence of those two investors. And so if you do that, what you're going to get is those expressions for the expected returns. But the, what this says is, you know, the expected returns on the, on the green uh, uh, equity asset, for instance, or cost of capital, is going to be lower 
by some factor that you have here in green uh, compared to the expected return on the on the brown uh, round. And so the intuition here is, you know, could be that those investors really like those assets so much that they're actually willing to take a cut on, on the expected returns that they get from them. It could be that they see them as less risky. Uh, it could be different things, but the literature on the topic is, is kind of unambiguous. It should be a negative uh, uh, in practice. So that's what the theory in the data. There's actually also evidence that uh, you may have this kind of green premium in, with a negative sign. So David again has, has uh, a paper where he estimates this uh, and, and puts it on the order of minus 50 basis points per year uh, in, in, a, in a recent period, actually even more than that in the, in the very recent period. These other papers by Bolton and Kapachik and many different uh, other people that uh, put this at even higher level. Okay, and so the, the, the bottom line is, this green premium seems to be seems to be here uh, in the in the data. Now, I do want to say something in passing, uh, even though that won't be our focus. Estimating this green premium is actually very tricky. Right? You probably all expect that. It's very tricky for many different types of reasons. At least one of them that has been emphasized a lot uh, in the literature, but also in practice, is that you know we've seen such a rush towards uh, green assets these days, green investments. That this has tended to put upward pressure on the price of those of those investments, so that the realized returns on those on those uh, uh, investments has, has grown quite a lot. And so, if you actually estimate this green premium on the very recent period, the last few years, you tend to find sometimes positive numbers. Okay, so you know there's a bit of a debate on the literature about how to how to correct for this, and you know we can talk about this uh, more if you're if you're interested. But the bottom line is, you know, this is what the literature has been focusing on, and and this green premium seems to be here in the sense that at least. Uh, at least the difference in uh, those assets have seems to have different returns in, in expectation. Yes. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Just a quick question. So, in, in this type of setup, is it, we think about it, there's not a perfect sorting mechanism. In other words, one company may have some brown investors and some green investors. Does the literature talk about? So, what is the actual? effect on the company's cost of capital? Does it gravitate to the lowest? Does it just become a weighted average between those two? Does one have a bigger effect relative to the other? How does that uh, play through? Yeah, so, so that's, a, that's a great question. So basically, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the theory. And so I'll, I'll go to those expressions. So we'll see what, how this plays out. It's something along the line of what you were saying. It's, it's some kind of weighted average, basically, of, of, of the different types of investors that you have that you have in your company. So that's, that's what the literature has been saying. Now, of course, in practice, if you have more green investors, it might be that this has a more impact on the firm than if you have less of them. So in a sense, the, in those models, we will simplify the world. We'll have like two, two assets, green and brown, and that's what we're going to do. But you know, those, the share of investors uh, that, you, that are owning your, your company is definitely going to be very important. Yeah. 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 What has the price of yeah, so I'll try to repeat the question in case uh, the people can, can hear. So the, the question is, I guess, what what what's the benchmark uh, to which we uh, you know from which we start when we want to estimate the premium? So basically, what you're asking is, in a sense, what is this part here? What's the the, the market? Term? So I'll say a quick word about this. In practice, what people do is the usual thing. So you start from a CAPM model or from Fama French type factors, if you've heard of this kind of finance uh, finance models, that's what you're going to use as a, as a, as a bench. So in the, in the, the empirical part, that's what we're going to be doing. All right, so I'll, uh, all right, so let me know if you have other questions. So I'll keep going on this. So, you know, this is what the literature has been doing, really focusing on this green premium that stems from the preference towards green investing. Okay? This is really the, the main thing. What we're going to be asking is, okay, or what the literature has not been asking at all is, okay, what about this consumption? We know in practice that green consumption becomes more and more important. And so what if the, the, the green investors that we have also actually care about this green consumption? Okay. So this is, you know, there are reasons to believe that those two things will, uh, will interact and you'll see that, uh, that, that they do. And so this is really the, the question that we want to ask in say, how do pro-environmental preferences for consumption translate or impact uh, investment decisions, the cost of capital of firms and, and, and so on and so forth? And how is this going to interact with those pro environmental preferences for investment. Okay. So, you know, to be able to, to, to talk about this, uh, we, we kind of have to go the, the, the theoretical way. Uh, 
we, we kind of have to go the theoretical way because you know we, we need to be able to talk about asset returns, portfolios, investments on one, one hand, but also consumption, the price of consumption and all these kind of things on the other hand. We're going to have to take a theoretical way. And, and in particular, we're going to have you know, uh, some kind of macro model in spirit, okay? in, which, in which we have we have all of those things. And so in this macro model, the idea is, you know, at the end of the day, if you look at the scale of the economy as a whole, the end investor who, who owns the wealth is also the, the end consumer. Okay. So that's the spirit of those of those kind of macro or they're also called general equilibrium uh, uh, model. So we're going to have to to build such a model. Now, you know, again, I promise I wouldn't get into too much technicalities. So I'll try to mostly show this uh, under the rug. But um, it turns out that on the technical side, there's a bit of a hurdle into solving this. And so if you care about these kind of topics, uh, you can you can go to the paper and see how we do that. You know, that that's also part of the contribution of of, of what we have, even though I won't talk about it. All right, so what do we do in, in practice? Well, we're gonna be a, a macro type model in which we have uh, basically two equity assets, green and brown, two consumption goods, uh, green and brown, and uh, two etiologist investors, a green investor and a neutral investor. You kind of have to schematize a little bit because when you have models, that's what you that's kind of how what you what you have to do. What's gonna be very important is that this green investor is gonna have this, this tilt in, in preference towards green investing like the literature has been talking about, but is also going to have this tilt in preference towards green consumption. Okay, that's really the key new aspect that we want to that we want to focus. So you know, we'll allow for general specification, general method, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, again, I won't talk about this uh, too much, but still, the concept, the the, the contribution is on the conceptual and theoretical side. So I'll, I'll try to walk you through what's the intuition of of the the channel that we uncover and how we can actually test it to some extent in the data. Um, and so. As I was saying, basically, the, the last one is going to be to, to, to see whether, okay, is there any, any evidence of this kind of things uh, uh, in the data? Okay, and so we'll, we'll, we'll go to that towards the end. It does seem to be, it does seem to be the case. Okay, we, we find some factors that, that basically is directly related to this consumption aspect that seems to be price uh, in, in expected returns. Yeah. Max, just a question about the setup here. So you can imagine one circle that are investors, green investors, one circle that are green consumers. There could be overlap, right? Mm -hmm. The investors can be the consumers, but there could also be right different groups. There could be consumers that are not investors and vice versa. So this model, it feels like it's talking to the overlap, right? If you do the Venn diagram, it's people that are both investor and consumer that are sitting in the middle. Is that correct? That, that's exactly correct. So we start there, and that's kind of the what those macro type model uh, um, you know, so it's actually a great point, right? Uh, here we're going to assume that basically, at the end of the uh, at the end of the day, at the scale of the macro, <laughs> you have one big or a few big investors that also are the ones that are going to consume them. So that's what we're going to do in this paper. Now, it's a it's for sure a, a, a simplification because in reality those two groups might might not be might not be the same. And so, in a sense, we we see this as a as a starting point to start thinking about these questions. Then the next natural step is going to be okay. What if we actually put but separate those two groups or put some kind of financial intermediaries in a sense between the consumers, or retail investors, if you, if you want, and then you know, institutional investors and what was actually going on uh, in, in practice. So uh, in a sense, we really see this as a natural next step to, 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 to this project, but we start with the easier one, which is, okay, let's first say they are the same and see what, what happens. And you'll see that there's already something that pops up that is quite potentially quite important. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, all right, so that's what we do. What do we find? Uh, so, you know, and then we'll dive into a little bit more details. So, you know, from a theoretical perspective, let me just mention that because uh, it kind of alludes to the point that we had before. It's going to turn out that two main variables or two main groups of variables are going to be important to characterize what's happening in this economy. So one of them is the wealth share of the green investor. It's kind of relates to the point that we had before. How big is the green investor is going to matter a lot, right? It's going to have, it's going to it's going to determine how big the impact is on expected return, cost of capital, and those kinds of stuff. Something else that pops up here, uh, which is a bit more unexpected, is going to be this relative supply value. Or what I mean by that is basically the relative production firms in the in the economy. And so, <laughs> why do you have to keep track of this? Why why is it important? Well, it's exactly because of those consumption. When people, when, you, when people start caring about what they consume, and in particular the price at which they can consume different goods, uh, one big thing that is going to impact the price of those goods is, is the production of the, of the firm, right? And so because of that, 
uh, they're going to have to keep track of the production of the firm, uh, 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 you know, because that's that's something that directly impacts uh, their, their consumption market. Okay. So probably won't talk too much about this in, uh, in 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 practice, but that's one of the pieces that is that is underlined. From our perspective here, what matters is that, you know, from those two variables, we can derive all the variables that we care about in this economy. Okay, so the portfolios, uh, the cost of capital, and and so on and so. On. So basically, what I'm going to be focusing on today. Is going to be uh, is going to be expected returns, I guess. Uh, again, uh, and so you know we focus on that today. At least we focus on that because uh, that's the simplest thing that you can relate to to the data. Um, and uh, um, and also you know in practice this whole literature has been has been you know about moving freedom, which is about which is about expected returns. So we're going to focus on that. And so this is what the expected returns on the different assets. So the cost of capital, the expected return, cost of capital, the same thing, is going to look like in this economy. So three main pieces uh, to be openly uh, yay in the country. Oh, and so I think someone is, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, so the first one is basically some market term and that, that was not in this question. Okay. So I'll say a word about this when we get to the, to the details. The second term is gonna be this green premium. So this green premium that comes from uh, the preference of investors towards green investing. Okay, that's what the literature has been focusing on. And the new thing that pops up when you have consumption motive are going to be what we call those consumption premiums. And so those consumption premiums are going to be about really, uh, uh, well, you know, the consumption motive of the investors. So, you know, we're going to take this expression and decompose it both in the model, but also to some extent in the, in the data. So what we're going to find is, you know, this green premium, uh, as the rest of the literature finds, in theory should be, a, should, should be negative, okay? So we're going to find the same. In the data, it's a bit more murky for the reason that, that, we, that I've talked about uh, already. So that won't be too much of our focus. Our focus will be on those consumption premium. And so, you know, I'll give you the intuition of, of the sign of those consumption premium in more details when I actually show you the, the, well, the details in a, few, in a few seconds. But it's going to turn out that because of those, uh, the, the green assets is actually going to turn out to be a riskier asset for, for the average investor. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be the case, again, we'll see that in more details, but it's going to be the case because this green asset is going to have actually very poor returns exactly when, when the investor needs it, which is when the price of the consumption goods, the green consumption good is very high. In those situations, the, the investor really needs the money. Right? Financially, she needs to buy the good and the price of the good is very expensive. And it turns out in those situations, on average, it seems to be uh, the brown asset that actually uh, has fire, uh, higher financial returns uh, and that basically serves as, as a better hedge uh, against the situation. Okay, so yeah, I, I'll just finish the this slide and, and then uh, go back to this. So you know, I'll spend more time trying to explain what's what's the issue. Okay, so just just to finish this before taking Nalin's question, you know, you can see where this is going, right? If you take those two things together, you have a green premium that seems to be negative on average, and then you have those consumption premium that tend to be positive on average. And so if you take the uh, if you take the sum of the two. What this means is that the cost of capital difference between green and brown firm might actually shrink by quite a lot. It may be lower than what uh, than what we might expect. Okay, so that's going to be the main main factors. Nelly? So, yeah, so the, the statement you're making is about kind of, um, so the, state, the statement, let, let me, put it, the statement that I'm making is a statement about the dynamics of those. So you, that's true that on average, the green firm is actually going to be, uh, the yeah, so so profit, I'm not sure whether I want to say profitable, but but the, the, the price of the green equity is going to be slightly higher than you would expect because of that. But what I'm talking about here is the dynamics. So it, it's, okay situation in which the price of your green goods actually increases. You know, think of it as a situation in which it's, it's very, very, very expensive. And so it's kind of the situation where we face these days, right? You face a trade-off. You really hate this kind of uh, assets, but you need to pay for the good that you like. And when it's very expensive, the, the returns, uh, you're going to care a lot about the financial returns of, of those different types. Of and so uh, in those cases, relatively speaking, the, the, the brown firm is, is going to do better. So in the model, uh, the idea is because supply shocks are, are quite important, right? And it's, it's going to, you know, if you think of a situation in which the price of the good, now I'm 
going ahead of what I wanted to say. But anyway, if you if you uh, you know it's a bit it gets a bit technical, we will go back to that. But you know the, the short story is situation in which the price of the green consumption goods, the Tesla and all this kind of stuff, are high, tends to be a situation in which the production of those green firms is actually quite. Okay, those green firms are not doing too well. That's why partly the price of those goods is high. And so, at least relatively speaking, the brown firm is going to do is going to do well. Okay. At least if you compare it to the to the to the green firm. And so, the production of those brown firms is going to be a bit higher. The relative dividend, the relative returns on those brown firms is going to tend to be higher in comparison. To the, 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 okay. But so, we'll, 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 we'll go back to this to some extent when I when I go to the to the yeah. Right, let's keep going. All right. All right. Okay, so so but you know this this is this is this is going to be the, the the main the main point. So you know, before going to the details of the model, I don't really want to do that. But you know, well, I, I want to give you the intuition of why, why that's the case. You know, why 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 should we care about this? And so one of the reasons that we should care is that it actually talks to the literature on impact investing actually quite a lot, right? Because you know you all know that, but you have two main ways to to have impact at least that have been discussed uh, so far. One of them is this cost of capital channel. Right, it's an exit slash cost of capital channel. So you're going to pull your capital out of the brown firm, put it in the green firm. And by doing so, you hope that you're going to have an impact on the cost of capital of those firms and therefore foster uh, investment in the green. Okay. The second main way is to say, okay, no, I'm actually going to stay invested in those brown firm and, and, and uh, you know, engage with management to change them from the inside uh, and make them green. Okay, so that's the shareholder engagement. And so in a sense, our results kind of uh, uh, speak to both of those because if you remember what I said, when you have consumption motives, the cost of capital difference between green and brown firm uh, might shrink by quite a bit. And so if you're banking on this cost of capital channel to really have an impact, it doesn't seem too good, right? So it, 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 it kind of suggests that this cost of capital channel might be less, even less impactful than, than, than what we thought. And so in a sense, that kind of fits with an emerging theme in this literature that's been saying, you know, cost of capital channel theoretically is very nice, but in practice it doesn't seem to be doing too well. Um, the flip side of this is, even though she hates it, the green investor is going to potentially, or maybe she should, keep a, a bit of her wealth in those brown assets just because they provide very good financial returns when she really needs to pay for, 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 for what she wants. And so because she is keeping a bit more of her wealth in the brown assets than, than what you would have expected because of those financial motives, then it could be a great occasion to actually engage with management in those firms, given that she's invested in them. And so it kind of uh, suggests the, the, the shareholder uh, engagement story as, as, again, one more powerful channel to, to have. Okay, so that, that's, how, that's how this fits. All right, so just uh, one word on literature, and then uh, if you have a question, we can go back to it. But uh, so, you know, just again, the paper is theoretical, but from a broad perspective compared to the literature, or, or, or what has been in practice, you know, the focus so far has been mostly on this green investment aspect. So here, what we're saying is, okay, this green consumption uh, um, is becoming more important. People really start caring a lot about what they eat, what they what they consume, um, and, and there's strong reason to believe that those things may interact, at least if you think at the, at the macro. Okay, and so basically this framework is, is kind of one first step in that direction to, to try to be able to talk about both of those things in a, in a joint fashion. Okay, so that's kind of our, uh, deep contribution, if you if you want to to those literatures. All right, here's a plan for the for the rest of the talk, and then I'll stop if you have, if you have uh, uh, more questions. So I'll talk about the economy. I'll talk about what we call characterizing the equilibrium. So theory speak to say, I'm going to show you what the variables look like in this economy, right? And then we'll go back to empirics to try to see whether there is any evidence for uh, for this in the data, and uh, it, it seems that there is. All right, any question before? Yeah. Account that, so well, when you say price, mm -hmm. when I think of valuation, I hear that term, I'm thinking of a netting, a profitability of the company, right? But what actually causes value to go up and down, which is not revenue, that's the net about that actually that's what the investor gets. So when you talk about something like a green, if there's a shock and it causes that the green firm has to increase the price of the good. Are you saying that the net income, the value is getting compressed because of that? Because I, I just want to be clear on the term value. Yeah, so it's it's actually, yeah, sorry. It, it, it's a tough question for us because, uh, so we're gonna, technically we're going to, what we're going to be using is what is called an endowment economy. And so we don't really model the way firm produce very seriously. And so we, it's really hard to say much about, uh, in practice, what 
you know, uh, the difference between those different things. So here we just think, okay, firm produce some goods and the quantity that they produce is what's going to have an impact. So that's what we're going to be seeing. But again, it's a great question because it, it points to two more things we are also thinking about doing starting from this. One of them is, you know, actually the consumer side might, might matter a lot, okay, demand shocks and this kind of stuff. And then the production side might, might matter a lot because, you know, especially if you want to think about how to have impact, at the end of the day, you want to, to, to change the way firms behave. And so if you really want to think about this deeply, you, you have to think of how they produce. And, and so you, you're going to have to go to those questions in a, in a much clearer way. So again, this is kind of complicated enough as it is. So for now, we keep it, for this paper, we keep it like that, but that's definitely something that we, that we have in the back of mind. All right, so let's, let me kind of uh, show you, uh, give you the, the intuition of what we do. So, you know, this is going to be the economy in, the, in this in this world, right? So again, it's it's a bit of theory. You're going to have to schematize. So bear with me. So you're going to have two investors. Think of them as two groups of investors. Okay, so green investors and then neutral investors that, that don't really care too much. And then you're going to have two main firms, so two groups of firms. One of them is going to be the the uh, green firm producing the green good, with a caveat that that, I, that we just mentioned, and then the brown firm, which is going to uh, produce the, the brown good. And then uh, this is an economy in which the investors are going to trade, you know, financial assets. That's kind of the whole point. And so here the assets are going to be the equity assets of, the, of both firms, right? So a green equity and, and, and a brown equity. And then there's also a risk level. You can have to, to have it. And so, you know, note here that both investors are still going to trade both assets. They have the full choice. They, they, they decide. But the green investor is going to have this slight tilt toward investing more in the, in the green assets. Okay, so that's what the literature has been focusing on, and that's what you know. In practice, we see we see the case. What we're going to be uh, adding is really okay. So, what do people do with this uh, with with this money with those returns? Well, that's where the kind of macro side uh, of the model comes in, where the fact that green investor and consumer are kind of the, the same group, they're going to use the financial returns of those assets to finance the consumption of of the two different groups. Okay, so uh, you know that that's what's going to happen, and so. Again, both investors are going to consume both goods, right? But but uh, the the green investor uh, is going to have again the, this this uh, slight additional tilt toward wanting to consume more of the good. Okay? So again, this is subject to the caveat that we had before that in practice those two groups might be might be different. But at least at the scale of the macro economy, there could be a big overlap between between those. And so, you know, from this, we'll be able to derive this expected return expression with with a factor. That's going to basically allow us to at least test the the presence of this kind of motive in in the data. Okay, so in the future we, we can think of, of extending this. All right, so that's the overview. A, a bit more details on all of this. So all of this, the production we talked about it, uh, the assets and the other stuff is all technical. So I won't talk about it at all. You can ask me if you if you want. Uh, and I'm going to take the question in a second. In a second, Andy. Uh, what I'm going to focus on is 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 what you have at the bottom here, which is uh, you know, investor preferences, okay? The way investors uh, are gonna set their portfolios because this is really what's gonna allow us to study those consumption motives in a, in a very clear, okay? Yeah. So the green, there's no line between green and brown investor. Is there, how do they relate to each other? They're producing the same good as a couple of substitutes. What's, what's the... So, so all great questions, so the, the about, so maybe maybe I'm going to the next slide and you it might, it might help. So, okay. Don't, don't worry too much about, about what this is, or if it's obvious to you, but it's great, maybe you should tell us how to, to solve it better. Uh, anyway, so this is gonna be the, the optimization, optimization program of the, of the investors. If you forget about the math, and I'm gonna to get to your, to your question, Andy, uh, you know, what this is saying is okay, investors are gonna set their portfolios uh, according to the, the returns that those different assets have, that's what they do in practice. But because of this consumption motive aspect, they're also going to care about the consumption of the goods that uh, that that they want to that they want to to, to eat, right? And so here it kind of uh, gets to your point about uh, um, substitute or not. This tells you that they, they still want to consume both of the goods, which is true in practice. Right? In practice, even though you hate it, even though you prefer driving a Tesla or whatever, you're still going to have to buy some things that are producing a dirty here. Right? So they're both going to consume both of the goods, and actually, theta, which is going to be the how substitutable those, those goods are is technically quite an important uh, part. So that answers your first question. About your second question on how they interact. So, you know, they're going to interact in the sense that they are both going to buy uh, the, the 
all of those goods. And so, you know, the price of those goods is going to have to clear the market. Okay, so they're mm -hmm. going to interact in this way. And then they're going to interact in the, in the financial market because, you know, even though the, the, the green investor um, really wants to invest in a green, in, in a green asset, it's still going to have to be the case that somehow the price at which those assets trade is going to be enough to make the, the, the other guy happy. Right? And so they are going to interact in the, in the financial markets uh, as well. Does this answer your, your question? Or? No, but I have, I, have, I have so many questions. It's not worth trying to answer. My all right. So we, we can get to all of your questions then. Uh, yeah, yeah I, okay. All right. Uh, so, okay, this is the, the optimization program. Uh, so just to, 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 to say, what about this? You know, you see four things here, two that I'm going to forget about and two that I'm going to talk about. The two that I'm going to forget about is one in blue is what we call recursive preferences. Okay. Uh, and then uh, in orange, this theta is this elasticity of um, substitution across groups. So we talked about it already. Those are kind of technical stuff. So, you know, let's forget about them. Too. If you're interested, we can talk about it. Um, what I'm going to focus on are... Uh, alpha in red, if you see it, which is going to be this tilting consumption towards the, the green good. And then phi in, in uh, green, which is going to be the tilt in investment towards the green. So just to, to, to say all of this in, in, in words, again, the first two we forget is technical. What we're going to focus on are those, those, those point three and four. So point three is uh, in words, you know, both investors consume both of the goods, but the green investor is, is you know, having this slight tilt. And it's going to turn out to be basically the main driver of those consumption. Okay. We're, going to, we're going to see that. And then the, the point number four, it looks a bit you know, more complicated in this setup, but this is pretty much what the literature has been talking about. It's the, the tilt in preference towards green investment. So the whole question here is going to be, okay, how do those two motives, green consumption and green investment, interact? And, and you know, how do they yield the, the, the investor decision at the end of the day? Okay. That's the, the whole uh, the whole question. Just a, very yeah. quick, just a quick intuition question. Mm -hmm. It's not a dig on the model because kind of like the models you got to make something. Just the you, you say tilt. Mm -hmm. Tilt as it's been pushed through the model in some sense is rep represented by some economic trade off. Mm -hmm. I assume, right? So you you have a cost for the good and you have a return that you incur from your asset. So. Does the tilt also generalize to non-economic preferences? I guess is something that I'm curious about. So it's a it's a great question. So the the tilt um, here here the, the tilt, for instance, if you think of the green assets, maybe the the easiest one. Uh, it could be different things. It could be that you you really think that these green assets um, is is you know, to some extent less risky in some way. And so in, in the way you assess them, that, that's what you, you account for. It could be some non-pecuniary thing. It could be just, you know, you 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 think climate change is very big. You don't really know how to, but you think you, you have to invest in those things. It doesn't really tell you what exactly this is, but definitely once you have this, you're gonna have a trade-off between financial returns and this preference for the for the for the for the green asset. So I don't know if it answers your question, but you 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 know in a sense we don't micro founded that's what it's called in the economic literature we don't really tell you where this is coming from we just notice that in the data there seems to be a lot of green investors and more and more uh, but you, know, you, you could go further and then try to uh, find deeper reasons why why this okay so, so it can generalize to a pretty broad set of references back to technology yeah yeah, yeah. It, it could be it could be anything that makes you want to 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 uh, to hold the assets or consume the green goods uh you know for for, for any kind of reason yeah it could be a yeah yeah, yeah. exactly all of, yeah yeah all of the reasons that make you change a bit the trade off and not just look at financial returns or look at them in a you know slightly different way could fit in there yeah yeah all right thank you for uh, thank you for the for the question. all right so miss okay this I've talked about already so I'll I'll skip let me talk to talk about this characterization but you know it sounds very fancy but you know I think what I'm going to be doing is focus on, on, on asset prices. Okay, I'm going to be focusing on, on what we can go to in the data, the cost of capital, the expected returns. All the rest is you know is interesting and if you care about it, you, you can can have a look at it. Okay. All right, let's focus on this expected returns. And so this is what expected returns and you might say, okay, wait, you lied, it's more math, but so this is what expected returns uh, uh, look like in this uh, in this economy. So let's let's take one of them. So this is for the green and the brown assets. Let's take one of them to try to really understand what, what what's happening. So this is kind of the expression that I had in the uh, introduction, just in a more precise. 
So this is the expected excess returns on the green asset. Okay. So three main pieces. The first one is what I call the market premium. And as we talked about already, you know, if you know CAPM, CAPM beta, or even Pharma French type factors, whatever you know, financial factors you may want to, to use, this is basically the, the theoretical equivalent of, of this. Okay, so nothing, nothing very fancy. The second piece is this green premium. And so you know, we've talked about it. It's it's the, the piece coming from the, the tilt uh, in uh, in uh, a green investing. That's one meaning. And so, as uh, I mentioned a few times, at least in the theory, this should be this should be negative. Uh, in, in. And then the last piece are those consumption premia. And so, you know, in a sense, we, we kind of um, talked a little bit about about what the the intuition uh, the intuition is. But to 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 figure out the sign of those, you have to kind of think in, in two steps. The first step is uh, you know because the uh, green investor also cares a lot about what she consumes. Um, she's going to really be unhappy in a situation in which the price of her favorite green consumption goods, Tesla or whatever, is very expensive. Okay. So in those cases, she's really going to be kind of facing a trade-off. Right? She's going to be basically strongly, scrambling to find money to be able to pay for that. Good. And so if she finds any assets whose uh, financial returns are, are high in those situations, that's, that's going to be a good hedge for her. She's really going to like those assets and tilt her portfolio slightly towards those for this kind of insurance type motive. The second layer to this is, okay, it turns out, and you know, I spoiled the, the, spoiled the, the surprise already, but it turns out that in, in the model at least, and we'll see in the data to some extent, uh, the, the brown assets turns out to be uh, this good hedge. And the reason is, is what I've, I've you know, alluded to earlier. If you think of a situation in which the price of the green good is very high, that means that somehow the brown, the, sorry, the green firm's production is, is not very high. Okay, the, the green firms are not doing well, they're not producing enough so that the price can be you know, more reasonable. If you think in the relative terms, what it means is that the, the, the brown firm in that case and their production is gonna be, is gonna be doing better than the, the, the. And so if you think of relative dividend or if you think of, of financial returns, again, at least in a relative sense, the, the brown firm is gonna do better than the green firm in those cases. And so that's gonna be the good hedge that the investor wants, wants to have. So the flip side is from that narrow consumption premium perspective, the green asset is going to be a riskier asset that she doesn't really want to. And so, uh, you know, that's kind of the main that's kind of main, main thing. Once you have those consumption motives, even in this simplified model, you have this contributing force that arises that's going to basically put a, a, a positive gap between the green and the brown asset expected returns. And so, putting those two things together, as I was saying in uh, introduction. Green premium which is expected to be negative, consumption premium, which is expected to be positive. The, the gap between those two might actually shrink by quite a lot. So that um, you know, you have basically this force working against you if you really bank on this cost, cost of capital uh, uh, channel. So you know, that's gonna be the main point. I just want to try to show you this visually in the model. If it helps, if it's not, I'll, I'll just keep it and go to the data. But so here you basically have um, the difference in the expected returns on the on the uh, green and the, and the brown assets for different cases. And so the, the panel B here, if you can see it, uh, and in particular the, the, the black bar um, is the case in which we don't have uh, preferences for, for green consumption. Okay, so that's the, the, the case that the literature has been focusing on. And so as we expect in that case, uh, at least in the theory, the expected returns on those assets should be lower than that on the, uh, on the green assets, should be lower than that on the brown assets because of those green premium motive, okay? That's the, the story we know also. You add the green consumption motive, and what you see is that this black bar shrinks by quite a lot. In fact, in some specification, it basically shrinks to zero, okay? So again, uh, those consumption premia, you know, basically counterbalance a big part potentially of this green, uh, of this green premium. All right, that's the that's the main point. So for portfolios, I, I, I won't talk about this in, in any details. Uh, the, the, the point is, is kind of the same. So forget about the math here. We've said it already, right? The green investor, she really likes this green asset. So mostly she's going to tilt her portfolio towards it. But in those kind of extreme situations in which, or you know, unfortunate situation in which the price of her preferred good is very high, she would want to hold an asset that, that kind of pays in those conditions. It's, it's a bit of a, a trade-off, but it's a financial hedge. And so she's going to tilt back slightly her portfolio towards towards. Okay, that's kind of the, the idea. All right. 
So enough theory. Uh, let's try to see. Uh, you know, still our main contribution right is, is to show that once you start thinking about those these consumptions, you have something working working against you. Let's try to still see if there's any evidence of this uh, in the data. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is basically test this on expected returns. And, uh, you know, we're going to do that in, in two steps in a sense. First, is it true that assets that have high financial returns when the green goods uh, are expensive, are they good hedge? Okay, so do they have lower expected returns uh, uh, on average? Okay, so we're going to test that. It's kind of the first layer of, of the whole story, if you, want, if you want. And the second one is going to be, okay, is it true that actually the the brown assets tend to be this good hedge, okay? So that the, the green asset is actually riskier uh, from those consumption premium perspective. So let's try to see, uh, let's try to see that. So the way we're gonna have to do that is, you know, we're gonna take the expression that I spent a bit of time talking about, and then just estimate the empirical equivalent of, the, of this expression. Okay. So what we have to do to do that is just, basically it's just rewritten, but it's the same thing. Take, uh, find empirical proxies for the different components that, that, uh, that I've uh, been talking about. Okay, so we can talk about what those empirical proxies uh, uh, are, but you know the bottom line is we find empirical proxies for each of those, and then we estimate this uh, this empirical version of of our equation. And when you do that, and I'm going to skip a bit, when you do that, and and we focus just on the uh, consumption premium aspect, which is what you have here, you you can see three main things. Okay, so let's go through that. The first one is. What we call the price of risk, so sorry, more lingo, but the price of risk is basically what you estimate when you estimate this kind of uh, empirical version of the of the regressions. Um, those are going to have the, the the correct. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this in a second. Uh, but first, second, uh, statistically, those are strongly significant. So you know, so it's good. Uh, you you have t stats on the order of you know three, almost four for some some of them. It's actually quite large, given that those are, are actually built from macro data. Usually, the t-sets are much lower from, from now. And then the last thing is that this is going to be economically large. And so let's try to see you know, why the sign is correct. What this is saying is, you have the, those negative signs everywhere. What this is saying is you know, an asset that pays when uh, this factor, which captures basically the average price of the green goods, uh, such an asset is going to have, on average, per year, minus 1 to minus 1.5 uh, uh, percentage point expected returns. Okay. So this is this is pretty much exactly this is pretty much exactly what you want. What it says is the asset that in a sense insure you against those those situations in which your, your green good is very, very expensive are going to be so valuable to you that they are seen as you know in aggregate less risky for uh, from an investor perspective. Okay. So this is this is what those negative signs uh, 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 mean. So in short what it means is that this this first uh, part of the of the of the uh, you know story uh, seems to be seems to be uh, uh, supporting the data with this with this factor. The second and last part, and then I'll, I'll wrap up, uh, is okay. Is it true that brown assets are actually good hedge, okay, or that green assets are riskier from this consumption premium perspective? And so this is what this this graph is showing you, and the answer is is, is yes, it seems to be the case. But so what this graph is showing you is the expected returns difference, so the cost of capital difference between green and brown firm, when you focus narrowly on the consumption premium. Okay, you forget about all the rest, you focus on the consumption premium. What you see is, okay, before 2013, well, not much, but actually there was not much at all in the sustainable asset pricing space, so you know, not very surprising. Uh, and starting from, from, from then on, you, you basically have this positive gap that opens between those two, between those two measures. And so, this positive gap is exactly what, what the model is telling us. It's telling us that from this consumption premium perspective, the green assets has higher expected returns than the brown asset. Okay, so that it is indeed riskier than the brown assets when you focus on this uh, on this aspect. Okay, and so in a sense, that confirms uh, in the data uh, this the, the the kind of relevance of, of this kind of story that kind of seems far fetched if you just think of the of the of the book. So you know. We, we take those the empirical evidence as kind of evidence that uh, that seems to there seems to be something along those lines at least uh, at the at the macro scale. All right, so um, I think I'm probably too too much already, but so let me conclude and just basically circle back to to the implication of of of, of all of this. And you know, the first one I've, I've I've mentioned a few times, right? Because of those consumption motives, it may be the case that the cost of capital difference between green and brown assets might actually be 
even smaller than what we would expect. Okay? And so this is kind of one more uh, blow to, to this uh, cost of capital story, right? Like if, if you ask researchers, practitioners, it seems to be the case that now less and less people are convinced that this is a, a very, a very effective way to, to change firms. And so what this suggests is that the, the, the kind of the flip side is because of purely financial uh, 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 motives, because you know, we all face trade off, and in some situations, you kind of need the money to buy the you want. Uh, the green investor may keep uh, slightly more of her wealth in the brown asset than what we would have expected. And so, if she does so, that could be a green, uh, a great occasion to actually engage with management and, and change the firm from these. Okay, so in a sense, that gives more uh, um, credence to this to this idea that shareholder engagements might be might be actually more powerful uh, in practice. Okay, all right, that's it. So that's my just conclusion side. But you know, just from a very very big picture perspective, what we're saying is okay. Green investors are very important. Uh, the literature has been starting to, to study them. Something else is very important and it's going in important is in importance, it's green construction. And uh, there are deep reasons to believe that at least at the macro scale, those two things could interact. So basically what we propose in this paper is a framework to start thinking about those questions in a, in a kind of joint and, and uh, you know, uh, clear way in a sense. Okay. All right. That's it. Uh, thank you very much. And then uh, happy to take more questions if you if you. But is the is your assumption? And I'm trying to kind of think it through in my own little throw away by thinking about problems, solutions, and little factors. I mean, are, are you saying essentially that if I'm if I buy a Tesla, I'm going to reduce my investment in Tesla stock? I'm saying that there are reasons to believe that 